Get ready to embrace debate. First take starts now. San Antonio, thank you so much for having us. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for having us. I'm Carrie Champion. This is your official mayor, Skip Bayless. Thank you. And he's back. We're so happy he's we back. We are right? so happy to have Stephen him. Stephen A. Smith, give it up for him, please. Carrie, before you go any farther, uh -huh. I just want to say one more time, Spurs in six, oh, baby. Wow. Spurs oh. in six. Listen, listen, listen. Uh -huh. I haven't been here mm -hmm. my first day here. I picked the Miami Heat seven. You know? And I want to say, for the record, I don't care what y'all say. I want to say for the record that nothing that transpired last night has changed my mind. Oh, boy. Before we get... Before we get into that topic, we let, so tell you, you know. let me tell you who we have on the show today. And I, I didn't need ask you guys to know. Vote. We got one of the greatest yeah. point guards of all time, Isaiah Thomas. Will be. Yeah. You guys remember him from the 2003 championship team here at the Spurs. Steven Jackson will join us. Yeah. Former Spur, obviously three chips for you guys. Bruce Bowen will be here. Yeah. And our very own basketball expert and analyst, Chris Broussard. We love him. Give it up for him. But first, let's talk about the game. It's what you've been waiting for. LeBron James, ladies and gentlemen, missed the final three minutes and 59 seconds of the game with cramps. Uh, it's not the first time cramps have troubled him late in the NBA Finals game, 2012, game four. You guys may remember he left the fourth quarter, but he returned. And the Heat won that game, but that was not the case last night. Spurs ended the game on a 31-9 run. They win 110-95, to the final score. Skip Bayless, though. The mayor, unofficial and official, you you were right about how many points they'd win by 15, except you were off a bit. 112 to 97? I blew it. You badly. blew it badly. I, I missed it by two points uh, on each side. Okay, oh, well. so listen. I'll be better in game two. I, I, I'm sure you will. Help us out. Please tell us uh, what happened in game one. You know, I, I'm afraid that I might not be able to finish today's show out here in this San Antonio heat. I might cramp up. <laughs> You know, that was a little bit of a cheap shot because LeBron James deserved it. I must say, what happened last night to me, Stephen A. Smith, was so typical LeBron James. He is such a great player. He is so gifted. He is such a good guy. But I'm never quite sold on his mental toughness. And this was a classic example of just that. I point out, 17 other players on both both teams played through a sweat bath of a night. Obviously, the AC broke early at AT&T Center. 17 players toughed it out, and only LeBron James cramped. Only Le LeBron James got gassed with about seven and a half minutes left. And what what is almost laughable to me is how melodramatic LeBron always is about whatever happens or befalls LeBron James. With seven and a half minutes left, He's waving his hand to Spolster after he misses a three. Take me out, coach. Take me out. Nobody asked it out of that game except LeBron James. And as Spolster said, it was like a punch in the gut of the psyche of our team because all of a sudden your best player isn't there for you. So all of a sudden with four minutes left, he cramped. And there is no doubt. I'm not saying any – Please, God, no, the last thing I'm doing is inferring that he faked his injury. He clearly cramped. But everybody knew early in that game that you were going to have to hydrate like crazy. You were going to have to pound water, Powerade, that's LeBron's account, Gatorade. You might have to eat a banana at halftime to restore your potassium. You have to do whatever you have to do to stay alive on the floor and avoid the cramps. 
And this is classic lack of intangibles on LeBron James' part. He wasn't there when his team needed him most. So Michael Jordan played through his classic finals flu game, and LeBron James turns into LeCramp last night. Right on schedule. Now, do I think in any way, shape, or form that if LeBron had stayed healthy for the whole game, that Miami would have won the game? I do not. The Spurs did what the Spurs have been doing throughout the playoffs. We'll talk about this in a minute. They would have maybe won by only 10 if LeBron had finished the game instead of 15. But they would have won the game. Mr. Smith, the floor is yours. I find your opinions on this utterly ridiculous. I'm shocked. Let me say this. Let me say this. First of all, first of all, we're talking about cramps here. That's what we're talking about. You grant you're right. Nobody else had that problem but LeBron James. But LeBron James has historically had problems with cramps. There have been many times during the regular season, during the postseason, throughout the years, where he has to leave the game, go into the hallway, get stretched by trainers or whatever the case may be. Now why that's a problem for him? I don't know. Neither Your do I. Your argument, however, would have more legitimacy if he never had this problem and all of a sudden it's game ones of the NBA Finals and here he is with his cramping. That is not the case. LeBron James has had many instances in the past. I, I'm not the, sure the, many. The, 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 I, are, I'll give you game four well, well, two well, years no, no, ago. No, it is many. The difference is is that it's not highly publicized, nor is it an issue, because if he has cramps during a regular season game, he's measured by what he does in a postseason. When you're a four-time league MVP and a two-time champion, and you've been to NBA four NBA Finals, and you're considered... To, you're, you're warranted consideration to be on a Mount Rushmore of NBA icons. You're going to get judged by the postseason, not the regular season. And he should so be. The fact, well, again, the fact is is that if he's having cramps during the regular season, nobody's going to care because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what LeBron James does between the month of November to April to anyone other than Skip Bayless. Now here's the bottom line, okay? LeBron James did have 23 points through the first three quarters. Mm -hmm. LeBron James did have 25 points for the game, which led to Miami Heat, which led all scorers. He also was an individual, if I recall, it wasn't just three minutes left. He started cramping, and it got to the point where he had to come out of the game with over seven minutes left. Yeah. From that point forward, I'm not sure he was Santa cramping. Tonya, I think he was gassed. No, no, no. Cramping. I think he was just hot. No, no. I, I, well, okay. I understand the TV angles, yeah. all that stuff. I'm telling you, I was standing there. He was cramping at that time. What I'm saying to you is this. If you look at all of those different things, all right, the Miami Heat had a two-point lead. The Miami Heat were defending. The San Antonio Spurs were turning the ball over like crazy. LeBron James comes out of the game, and all of a sudden they can't do anything right. And oh, by the way, when we talk about an aberration, all oh, you Spurs fans out there sitting around, okay, understand something. Let's keep something in mind. Even as great as we know the San Antonio Spurs to be, because they are great, and they are an elite team, and they are at least 10 deep. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that in the fourth quarter, the only starter to miss a shot was Tony Parker, who hit three or four? Nobody else. Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, Thiago, Splitter, Danny Green. Nobody missed a shot. They didn't miss a shot. You're ladies making my case. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an aberration. That no, it's not. not. It's the San Antonio no, Spurs. That's not true. It's not true. Not like that. Not like that. 14 to 16 shooting, 6 for 6 from three-point range. No, that's an aberration. So, again, I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say this to y'all. And I don't care what anybody says. Uh -huh. The Miami he lost this game last night because of what happened to LeBron James. If LeBron had not... I heard it, whether, whether I'm right or wrong, whether I'm right or wrong about this series, and before y'all sit there and stick out your chest and blow me, remember, I picked the Spurs last year and they let me down. So keep that in mind. No, did, you, you jinxed them. That's what you did. Yeah. The point is, the point is, if you look at it from this perspective, I'm just talking about this one game, not the series, this one game, it's Miami's if LeBron doesn't get hurt. Okay, so we're talking about the greatest and supposedly the fittest athlete in the NBA. It happens. Right? It happens. Why does it happen just to LeBron James? Wait, no, no, no. Wait a minute. As Isaiah Thomas, who will be on this show later, explained this morning on the radio, as I'm sure Bruce Bowen will acknowledge, as you, with your duplicitous self, mm -hmm. you know how you can be. Mm -hmm. You the fitness freak. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. that when you cramp up, 
There's nobody that could play through that. Jordan and them having the flu and all of that stuff is totally irrelevant to this equation. I have never seen Michael Jordan on the floor playing when he was cramping like that. I've never seen any player do that. So again, you can bring up other players, and it's unfortunate that it happened to him. Maybe we should talk about or whatever. It was a power aid. Maybe mm. we should talk. Maybe we should talk to LeBron about the kind of water that he's hey, drinking, I, I the kind agree. of liquid, something. But there is no question that the cramps. You can't compare that to what uh, did, somebody did, going through the flu or something like that. Did, did Michael Jordan ever cramp up? That you can remember? No, I don't remember him ever no. cramping up. But what's that got to do with the price of okay. tea in China? Tim Tim Duncan said after the game, we played through it. Okay. Shane, they Bat didn't cramp. Okay. okay, they didn't cramp up. Ray Allen said this game was right in my wheelhouse because right. he's in such but great shape. But they didn't cramp up. Okay. Uh, Shane Batty has said on, this on. reminded him of Cameron Indoor back at Duke you when it ran, wasn't air You ran marathon. Like many. Come on, you ran yeah, marathon. I'm glad you brought this up. Let Thank me you. ask you a question. Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yes. Have there been folks who ran in the marathon who cramped sure. up while skip? You know why? Because they're idiots. They didn't prepare for the marathon. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, okay. Uh, I have run several sub three hour marathons. Down the road in Houston, known as Sweat City, with high humidity, I ran two hours and 47 minutes and 20 seconds. You can look it up. You know what I did the whole day before? Mm -hmm. I drank until I couldn't hold any more liquid. The day before, but I have a question. you have to do it. As soon as the air, air conditioning broke last night, you have to just start pounding fluid so, 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 or you're going to but cramp I got, up. But I got a Nobody else but, cramped. Wait, wait a minute. But I got a question mm -hmm. because we know this is your level of expertise because I damn sure ain't running any marathons. Let's be clear about that. Okay? I don't think so. They ain't happening. They ain't yeah. happening. But what I'm saying to you is this. Is it possible, Skip, that some people are prone to them? I've well, never heard of that. I'm before. just saying, it, but LeBron has had many of them. So my point to you is that he's having some. Ray Allen hasn't had that. Tim Duncan and them talked about their playing through it, but they weren't cramping and played through it. Okay. They weren't cramping. The foreign players last night on the Spurs were laughing about this because they, they said all summer matter. long, Tony Parker played in the Eurobasket sure. Championships and France won it. Sure. He said, we play in this every night. No, 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 Manu no, plays no, in it no, every no, night. No. Patty Mills played in it no. every night. They were laughing about playing in the okay. heat, All right. not about the cramps. D Dwayne Wade, Ray Allen, Shane Battier, Chris Bosh said he loved it. The whole bit. They're not talking about playing in the heat. Nobody's complaining about playing in the heat. What you're saying is even though the conditions were ridiculous and they shouldn't right. have happened, and the NBA and the San Antonio Spurs, whoever runs that arena, it'd be, I'd be, I hope he keeps his job. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that has nothing to do with it. In the end, whoever is cramping is the one that's suffering. Because we about the heat. somebody didn't prepare for So you're the saying heat. that LeBron James Yes, he hasn't learned how to avoid cramps okay. yet, if that's okay. really the All problem. Right, time out, that's time it. out, time out. Doris Burke last night reporting did a great job, said it was nearly 90 degrees Not, and above actually, at she, the court. Actually, this morning, she said near she the heat. She changed it. No, she said near the heat's bench. Yeah. It was 102. Okay, I'm talking about on the court. Right. So let's talk about what was going on at the game. Do you feel they should have played once the AC went down? Well, I think that, you, listen, the conditions, Rod Thorne, the president of basketball operations for the NBA, spoke to Mike Wilbon after the game last night. He was absolutely right. The conditions were the same for both teams, and it wasn't a safety issue because the floor was safe to play on. So if the floor was safe to play on, then I'm not going to sit here and say that the game should have been canceled, postponed, or whatever the case may be. You you suck it up and you deal with the you deal with the situation. I would never go as far as to say that, mm -hmm. but we also have to appreciate and understand that it should not have come to that because there is no doubt that those conditions, whether he prepared well enough or not, there those conditions affected the best player in the world and the best player in the world's team had a lead for most of the game they were in the fourth quarter and he had the lead and they lost the lead because the man couldn't play mm. that's the bottom line Stephen A said they should have played Skip they definitely should have finished the game no player was in jeopardy but did the Spurs complain after the game about their hands were too wet to hold the basketball mm. they turned it over 23 times Tony Parker was slipping and sliding down the lane because there was a lot of sweat on the floor. But was he in jeopardy of getting hurt? I don't think so. Both teams had to fight through the same conditions. Tim Duncan said after the game, that's as brutal a condition as I've ever played in. Yeah, like the okay, yeah. so back to the original question of, did 
did the heat cost the heat? The basketball yes. game. No, it did <laughs> not. Yes, it did. Here's why. Finally, Danny Green's light turned green last night when, when I least expected it. Okay? That was the turning point in the game, and I'll be the first to admit. I tweeted in the third quarter, Danny Green is driving me crazy. I was about to throw things at the, at the television watching Danny Green. Suddenly, he got one open look and made it, and we saw last year in the series what can happen when he feels one shot go through the basket. They exploded around Danny Green. You pointed out they make 14 of 16 shots, and they were able to snap out of the funk they were in turning the basketball over, and they did what they've done to everybody through this playoffs. They blew that team off this whole I'm floor not, I'm here. Not, I'm, not, I'm not refuting and no way am I refuting what you saw in the fourth quarter. 14 to 16 shooting, 6 for 6 from three-point range yeah, is nothing short point. of phenomenal in sensation. I, I get that. But i got to ask you a question, whether rhetorical or not. If the man is the best player in the world and he can't go for the last seven minutes of an NBA Finals, it don't matter. Last Put four a, minutes. What, really. what, what I'm saying to you is this: He was asking out from the seven minutes, okay. seven minutes to 31 seconds. He came ball. back and did he make the layup. He came back, made one layup, and even after he made the layup, he asked out immediately. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you is this: We can't sit here and say this guy's the best player in the world. He's the most impactful player. This guy is the total package. He's this, this, that, and the third. And then all of a sudden, act like him being out of the game Time didn't out. matter. Did the San Antonio Spurs not just win game six at Oklahoma City without their best player for the whole second half? Did they do it? Yes, they did. Wait, so that's a should, question. should Bosch and Dwayne Wade have taken over yes. better down the stretch? Yes, yes they, they, should they, should have. they should have. Okay. They should They should. There's no question they should have done more because both of them are getting paid nine figures too. And I'm not trying to absolve them from anything. All I'm saying to you is that it doesn't negate the fact that the Miami Heat's defense was troublesome for the San Antonio Spurs for three quarters and four and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't negate the fact that they had the lead. It doesn't negate the fact that they seemed to, to have the Spurs number. The Spurs with 22 turnovers. You can talk about the ball slipping all this stuff. I understand. Mm -hmm. I get it. I'm not dismissing any of it. I'm simply saying the heat itself, no. The bottom line is you got to play through that. But the fact that LeBron caught those cramps and couldn't play, is what determined the outcome okay, of last night's I'll amend game. what I said just a little earlier okay. in the show. If LeBron had played the rest of the game, I'll say the Spurs would have won by 8 okay, instead of 15. I brought 15. it down from 10, okay. you know, like, I'll say by 8. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're on the Riverwalk here in San Antonio. We're hanging out with a lot of Spurs fans. I've got the unofficial mayor slash official, whatever you'd like to call him. Skip Bayless to my left. Stephen A. Smith. You, you've contaminated this crowd. You hear them Spurs and six. Jo joining me now, though, good friend, Miami Heat picker, Chris Broussard, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for him. Welcome. So, Chris, much like Stephen A., you were at the game last night, and you heard our first, our first debate. What happened with LeBron? Well, first of all, let me say I'm overjoyed for my longtime friend Skip Bayless. Why is that? Because this is two years of pent up frustration no. where yes. you had to hold no. your tongue about LeBron no. and give him his props and well, well, now wait. you get to What, what go about on the end of game it. six last year when he came completely unglued? Well, he hit that three pointer. I, I know, that. but he had that three turnovers in the last six and, minutes. And, 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 and he missed the shot to tie. And they won the game, so you were yeah, limited. Exactly. I know, but this is the first time you've been yeah. unbridled and release. I just to react to what I run. see. Oh, but God. I'll say this. Oh, God. The thing is, Skip, it sounded to me like your criticism is not really of LeBron. It's of, I guess, the Heat training staff or whoever is in. He's not a doctor. Whoever's in charge of making sure he's hydrated. But, but getting you play ball, Chris. You, you just learn early. You, you have to do this. You don't, to, you don't know as a player. You you rely on your training, your staff. How many years has he played now? What is well, it? Well, Stephen A. Here on the head, he has a history of cramping. I, we don't even know if it was the heat because he's cramped in regular conditions. I was there in or, 2009 against Orlando in the playoffs. He cramped. We know Oklahoma City. Yeah. He Game cramped. Four. Detroit yep. in 2007. He cramped. So clearly he has a history with this. 
And you haven't heard one athlete, okay, one real quick, professional real athlete quick. say they could play through that. Okay, on game four when he cramped, then, Stephen A., you and I were on Sports Center before game five, and you were making the case he might be hurt, like he might have a calf injury and he might not be able to go so in that game was a, five. That was when he was struggling because he was limping or whatever the case may yeah. be. But the point is there's a difference between that and cramping. He's never been shy and he's never hit when he's when he's hurt. So was he hurt cramped. in game four or was he cramping in game four? Well, I think I'm talking about 2012. Yeah, I think yeah. there are different levels of cramping. You know, and I think clearly this appeared to be more severe. Maybe it was the cramping in combination with the heat or whatever. But you can't, this is the thing, we've seen LeBron struggle in the finals before. Even last year he was hesitant at times, yeah. his, admitted himself he had doubts about his jump shot. Last night you saw none of that. No. Nope. He was playing tremendously. Even his last play he goes aggressively he to did. the hole, scores. The three-pointer he hits in the It, it was a big time three. At the I would agree. So you can't, this isn't something where you can say, oh, the pressure got to him or this or that. I think his body just failed him, at the, obviously, in an opportune time. Even Isaiah Thomas told Yahoo, who played yes. through maybe the best performance no ever in the finals history, yeah. yep. 25 points in the third quarter on that bad ankle. Although I think Michael's flu game was up there with it. But go ahead. I, uh, look, I don't want to diminish what okay. Michael did, but like Stephen A. said, a flu, an ankle, that's different than if your body is cramped up and you just really can't move. Here's all you need to know. And this is the point that I didn't bring up earlier. There was a play when LeBron James went in. I forget whether he missed or made the layup. But San Antonio was running back down the court on offense, and he stood on the baseline, and they had to come get him. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. That was the layup. I, I think that, that was, was, when he, was that when he tried to block I, 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 No, 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 no. He, went, it was on, he was on offense. Went to the layup and then stood, stood. on the baseline That's while San Antonio's cramped. offense went – what I'm saying to you is, yeah. does LeBron James not get back on defense? When have we ever seen that? We don't see that. He always, if nothing else, he gets back on defense. A matter of fact, when you're on a break, you're looking for LeBron because one of the things he specializes in is coming out of nowhere to block your shot, particularly on a break. So what I'm saying to you is that the fact that he wasn't even willing to get back on defense, right. and you had the Wayne Wade of all people with all of his injuries right. that he's had to deal with over the last couple of years, literally telling them, come get him, come get him. You know, I mean, listen, it's just one of those situations that's bad. It was inescapable. It's undeniable. I'm not talking about the series. LeBron James at his best with the Miami Heat, they could still lose to San Antonio regardless of what we're picking. But there's no denying that those cramps crippled him and just eviscerated okay, the chance Chris, that help he me out the with game. this because you know this man very well. Seven and a half minutes left. LeBron misses a three over from the, the wing. Dial ran at him. He missed it. And then as the play went on back to the other end, he immediately turned to Spolstra and says, take me out, coach. It, to me, this is just me because he's such a great player and such a good guy. This is showing a little bit of melodramatic mental weakness. Nobody does that. He made such a show of, take me out, coach. And, and it was more because he was gassed at that point than cramping. I didn't see cramps yet. I, I don't like that for his sake. It doesn't look good to your teammates. I don't think it looks good to fans everywhere because big-time superstar players don't react that way. Coach, I'm gassed. Take me out. And he makes such a big display out of it. That's... It just drives me a little crazy because I, I don't I don't not like him. Yeah. I, I'm fine when he plays great. I am. I come in and say, boy, that was a great game by LeBron. And he did some great things last night. But when his team needed him most, I don't get that kind of behavior. It's melodramatic to me. I mean, if he's really, whether he was cramping, I know there were players saying he had, they heard him say he couldn't breathe at times last okay. night. Yeah. So I don't know. Different if issue. Fatigue. Yeah. All right. I, I remember looking at him. Maybe if just five minutes into the game, and he he was down on his shorts. He looked like he was spent, and I was like, "Wow, this is early." I didn't even know at that point that the air conditioning. Have we not was seen off. three or four games even this playoff run when he looked a little mentally gassed? Well, no, no. I don't know about so mentally. I, I just thought I, I think physically. physically. I think physically. Okay, either, either way, physically, either way. Physically, mentally. he's looked gassed. He's had to carry a huge role. He's been asked to do everything in terms of playing multiple positions which is one of the reasons he's considering leaving Miami because he ain't trying to stay okay. in a situation where he's being asked to do so much. Not that he's going to end up leaving because I'm still betting my money on him staying. But in the end, when you're asked to do so much 
and you're looking at the second part of your I agree career. With that. Sure. You got to think, yep. you got to take those things into consideration. But sure. all I'm saying to you is this: still at all, when you look at it, cramping is cramping. It well, is. We can talk I'll about that. Well, you know what? He's demonstrative. Whatever. Well, you know what? If there's ever a reason to be demonstrative, is when you're cramping. It's not like you sit there and twisting your ankle. Ah, ah, come save me. You know what I'm saying? When you're cramping, but when you're cramping, you feel like that. You're like, Lord, have mercy, right. somebody help me. I can't move. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's really paralyzing. It's what happened to him. And, and right? I, look, what happened? I can't say nobody can say definitively that the Heat would have won that game. I but she, I don't think you can say definitively they would have lost that game. They're up two when LeBron first goes out. He comes back in, or they're up four. Mm -hmm. He comes back in, they're down two. Mm -hmm. When he leaves the game for good, they're down two. Spurs go on a 16-3 run. Danny Green, who LeBron had been guarding for much of the game, oh, yeah. no field goals through right. three quarters. Fair. He goes, he scores all 11 of his points in the fourth quarter when LeBron's out oh. in a three-minute Oh, by the stretch. way, Skip, I forgot to bring this up. He was good guarding Danny Green. But you know what happened? Manu Ginobili comes off the bench, hits two threes. All of a sudden, LeBron's guarding him. Then then, then, then Manu doesn't score, but Marco Bellinelli That's comes right. and scores eight points. Then right. LeBron is on him. So I'm just saying, let's let's remember the all. This isn't Kevin Durant, the scoring machine. This is LeBron James, the all-purpose dude. Whatever you need, I can fix your problem. And he wasn't there when it counted. You know what I do love about this conversation? You know what team is now going to feel slightly? going to game two. Oh, okay. My San Antonio Spurs. Because they're going to hear all this talk. They're going to hear that, oh, if LeBron had finished the game, you guys had I, I, no I, I, chance I, I, I of would, winning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I would like to make this point. You and all your little compatriots over here. Thank you. Let me tell you something. Thank you. Now, allow me, allow me, allow me to say... Mayor of San Antonio, uh -huh. allow me uh -huh. to say uh -huh. in front of all of y'all, <laughs> this is what makes y'all look weak. Oh you want every little advantage that you can get. If, if you're the best, if you're the best, you should want dudes at their best. So when you win, there is no doubt. As opposed to you, I'm hoping this guy gets hurt. I'm hoping that guy can't play. I want San Antonio to get here. I, I, wait, 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 wait. I had to go into last year's finals with Tony Parker with the pulled hamstring. Did you guys, did I hear you say, oh, what, you guys weren't at full strength. The Spurs weren't Dwayne at full strength. Dwayne Wade was banged up last okay. year, too. All That's right. why. And speaking of Dwayne Wade, I'm glad you brought him up. <laughs> His start last night was breathtaking yep. for yep. me. Yep. Was. I was saying, uh-oh, that guy is back. Didn't that miss a shot guy. in warm -up. Oh, Didn't miss a hey, shot. He was so explosive. He looked so healthy. And I must admit, I'm sitting there thinking, I might be in trouble tonight because of that guy. Right. Down the stretch, your X Factor, Chris Bosh, who also made some big-time shots in that game. Yep. But not late. Bosh, D-Wade, late? Nope. nope, weren't there when, when they needed him most because they still have a pretty good team without yep. sure. LeBron James. It's still pretty good. But it throws you off when you're used sure to playing through this guy all the time. And then he's not there. And it's against the Spurs. You know, it's not against the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Spurs started moving the ball well. They were hitting. They were on fire as far as hitting jump shots. And they moved so many players around offensively that I think I, I'm not ready to make a blanket statement that Dwayne and Bosh – couldn't carry them or can't carry them when LeBron's out. It was one game. Night. Exactly. Right. It was just, just one game. Quick, quick, well, hold on quickly before he gets out of here. Uh, after what you saw last night, he's still going with the Heat. You I guys can't talked change. About I don't change my pick. I, I, I stick with my pick. Heat and six. Six? Also, oh, wait. That means the Heat have to win. Help me with the math here. Four out of the next yeah, yeah. five. They, huh? they would have wow. won. They, they, I'm 80%, 85% sure they would have won last night if LeBron had played. Our next guest is probably one of the best defensive players there is. Look, let me tell you something. They're proud of you here. You guys want to get up for your boy Bruce Bowen? You brought them three chips. I, I you know, we did. We, good. Okay, we give, did me, it. give me the you team, know, please. I, no, exactly, exactly. But, you know, it's funny. Every time I came out, they would do this. So people, so people who didn't know, they would say, like, why do they boo you every time you come out? Okay. And I'm like, no, it's not a boo. Why are you looking like that, man? <laughs> can, I answer, can I answer your question? No, let me. Because when you were over on the board, uh -huh. why are you sitting there always trying to, you know, be act like it's make, make it seem suspenseful? Everybody, everybody knew you were going to pick the Spurs. 
You're going back and forth for it. We know where you're going. You know what? Now, see, what you don't understand, well, you understand it, but you don't want to understand, is that, you know, I came from Miami here. I know. That's and right. and, and, and I'll, I always give respect to Miami because that's where I learned to mentally become a winner under Pat Riley. It just didn't happen in Miami. It happened here with the great coach of Greg Collins. Well, it ain't too many people that would know that better than me since I'm the one that covered you. Well, well you, you went in Philly. Philly. Well, see, and you weren't see, winning there. And, and now, I definitely wasn't winning there. Right. I was cold and dealing with you. Yeah, it was cold. He wanted to shoot, play shooting games and all that stuff. But, you know, I, I, I like to, I I like to name this well, meeting. Ahead. But this is the Bowen Bowl. Uh -huh. I call it the Bowen Bowl if okay. there's anything. Okay. Because you have two organizations that are so similar okay. as far as the way that they approach the game. They're in the community. They understand what it's all about. You know, you have defense. Spurs know all about that. Miami understands that too. But it's at a different level. And we saw it last night. The team that played the D at the right time, it's still 48, 48 minutes in the game. Spurs remember what took place in game six last year. And last night, I think, was kind of an appetizer to all of what's taking place right, now. Well, here's the question. If LeBron did not play uh -huh. the last seven minutes, in and out, last four direct, uh -huh. but would the Spurs have still won the game? You, you cannot place the what-if game in this. He didn't play. Just as Skip alluded to, Tony Parker didn't play in the second half mm -hmm. in OKC, and they won in OKC. Mm -hmm. So it's still about your teammates. Mm -hmm. That's you. why. That's Thank you. That, in, in all seriousness, I think I think it's just it's ridiculous for people to put all the onus on LeBron. Okay. I mean, there are other players out there as well. When guys have huge games, they don't say, "Oh, but LeBron was off the floor, so it allowed so and so to go for 35." I can't take it. I can't take it. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Bruce Bowen. Why you gotta say you, my whole name? You, you went. You Bruce went, is fine. You win three rings. You win three rings if Tim Duncan ain't here. Yep. Oh. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm be, y all got we would have championship we, until Tim Duncan arrived in the we, city. We would have figured, figured out until Tim Duncan arrived in the city. How to utilize the city. David Robinson a lot stop longer. Oh, we would have used David no. Robinson. Number I know, one no, no. And, and, and in all here. seriousness, yeah. Yeah, it's all a team deal. Absolutely. Right. But see, oh, in, in, oh, even oh, against oh, against the 2000 and 2005 in the finals, Tim goes down with his ankle again. Listen, but we were still able to come back and play a certain way. You got to change your game. I'm not joking. Bro. No, I'm not either. You got to change your game in order to get victory. All I'm trying to say is this. I understand what an elite team the San Antonio Spurs are. Listen, San Antonio, I picked them last year. They should have won it last year. But let me be clear. LeBron James is the best player in the world. You can't say, you can't spend years saying this about the guy and then act like when he can't go pretty much for the last seven minutes of a game yeah. one in the NBA Finals, that it don't matter. Yeah, I'm, you I'm, can't have it both ways. I'm not... I, oh. They I don't want to hear. They don't want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I'm not concerned with the fact. <laughs> it, it's, at this particular moment, it's what the team is going to do, even when you don't have it. You had them for three quarters. You had LeBron for three quarters. I agree I, with that. And and the fact that you have to change things, you have to go to a more ball moving situation. Mm -hmm. When Tim Duncan went down in 2005 for us, we became a different team. Your guy, Rasho Nesterovich, mm. he was huge for us. Was he comparable as talent to Tim Duncan? Not necessarily, but we did different things to to make up for what Tim wasn't doing for us. You have to change. I don't think it's fair that you sit up and say because LeBron James wasn't on the floor that San Antonio wins. I think it's discrediting San Antonio who continued to fight the fight and the fact that Danny Green got you open in those moments where he's shooting uncontested shots, whereas before he wasn't. You would that be has right. You would be right if I am trying to absolve Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and the, Ray Allen and the rest of the team, which I am not doing. I know that they still have to step up and do what they're supposed to do, and that San Antonio deserves credit, and they deserve some culpability for not getting it done. My only point is the best player in the world who was balling up to that point couldn't go anymore. Let's not act like that didn't impact the game. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. What is so Question. complicated about that? Should the San Antonio Spurs have won game six last year in the finals and won the yes. NBA championship? Yes. Was the best player in the world on the floor all the way home in that game? Yes, he was. Yeah. Okay. So what's the big difference last night? 
So because he, we're talking about just last night's game. That's okay. all. We're not talking about the series. We're not saying that Miami would win the series. What we're saying is based on what we were witnessing over the course okay. of 48 minutes Here's of that game, do, do you, what would have happened? Do you realize how little credit you're giving a Spurs team that was under a lot of pressure last night? They were favored at home against a team that was relishing being the underdog coming into that game. LeBron, Bosh, and Wade before the game, they were very comfortable, very loose. They got to play loose last night. And all of a sudden, the Spurs started to stink it up. 23 turnovers, and Bruce will speak to this. Do you know how hard it was to snap out of that mentally in the fourth quarter and say, okay, let's right the ship, let's quit turning the ball over, bless you, and bless the Spurs for what they did because they, yes, they, they suddenly, they, they suddenly, you, you got to give them some credit for their mental toughness to say, Let's turn this around. Danny Green as, turned it around. You know, and it's funny, just as in last season, 2000, uh, uh, in, in game six, you know, Miami, they stayed with it. They stayed, they stayed with it. I remember when LeBron James threw the lob to Chris Bosh. He didn't have a look of panic when Chris didn't go get it. He continued the course. And for this team, he turned, it all, turned the ball over 23 times. That's 23 not characteristic times? of the Spurs. But it shows you the greatness of the D of Miami Heat. But when Miami Heat had the lead, they did not secure that lead. They didn't get quality possessions in the front court. And the San Antonio Spurs, who don't have a quitter's mentality, they continued on. And that's all it took. All you need to do is see the ball go in one time, and then momentum happens. Then there's a careless turnover. I think we're, right, we're putting too right. much into the fact that, okay, if somebody's not on the floor, I understand he's the best player in the world right now, Stephen A. I understand that. But even though he's the best player, you still have other guys. It's not just one guy. We saw that in 2007 yeah, when he was what, with Cleveland. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is this we're talking about one game we're not sitting there and impugning the integrity and the accomplishments of the San Antonio Spurs acting like there's no way they can win a game or whatever the case may be unless LeBron James is out we're just going by what we were witnessing the tempo the flow the way their offense was flowing or not flowing for those first three quarters the turnovers they were committing the fact that LeBron was on Danny Green and shut him down the fact that after Manu Ginobili came out hot LeBron was on him and all of a sudden then you got to go to Marco Bellinelli route when you look at the San Antonio Spurs. Let's not act like despite as great as they are, that what we witnessed in that fourth quarter is normal. 14 of 16 shots, all six three-pointers, that is an aberration. All five, four of their five starters didn't miss a shot against Miami's defense. They didn't miss a shot. Only had... Tony Parker missed one. All I'm saying is this. That's not normal. They had wide, wide open normal. shots. Time they had normal. wide open shots. It's Time their out. offense that create the wide open shots. That's the onus of the defense. If you're not paying attention to what's going on. not playing well no, and not no. playing. One that, if LeBron wasn't playing well, that would be different. But to not be on when the court, you don't anticipate that's going to happen. they have to leave when he takes his break. When he take his, takes a blow, now we're looking at the Miami Heat without LeBron James. Right. And they were still successful. They were still creating turnovers for the San Antonio Spurs. Right. I, I, I just, it's hard for me to take you, into account. You're smarter than that because you know that when you're on the bench, <laughs> Make, when you're on the bench getting rest, what you're doing is you're making adjust, you're, you're coaching, Bailey, you're making here. adjustments. That's entirely different than it's knowing not, the guy can't go. Come on different. now. It's not Come different. on now. Stephen A. Smith, yes. you are really starting to irritate me so? today. <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk aberrations, let's talk about the San Antonio Spurs turning the ball over 20-odd times through three-quarters of that game. So if we're going to play the what-if game today, uh-huh. What if I say, what if the, t the Spurs had turned it over six or seven times through three quarters? That would have been a blowout last night. So, so I'm saying, okay, that game should have been a blowout. If my team hadn't <laughs> turned it over 20 times in the first three quarters, it was a blowout. So I'm going to stick by that. It was actually a blowout last night. Okay? You're entitled to your feelings. All I'm telling you is this. It's one game. Don't tell me that based on what we were watching, for the first three and a half quarters last night that you could definitively say, I ain't going to go to Chris Broussard right at 85%. And <laughs> no, the Miami Heat would have won the damn game if LeBron was able to finish that game. Maybe not the series. That game. And we'll see moving forward. Because to be honest with you, I'm like this. Texas Heat ain't going anywhere. That's Miami right. Heat's going to be waiting. I hope I, I don't want to hear about <laughs> friends moving forward because somebody got to do something. Ladies and gentlemen, for the NBA Finals. Spurs in six.
Six, as you can see. A very rambunctious crowd. It's time for Carrie's Court. Do you know what Carrie's Court is? It's about the Spurs, apparently. <laughs> it's the time for our audience with Carrie's Court to quiz Skip and Stephen A. So, of course, we have Miguel Cardenas from San Antonio. All right, the first question is for Mr. Bayless. Bayless, he'd like to know who's more reliable, Tom Brady or Tim Duncan? Ooh. That's a good one. Ooh, that, that is questions. a tough and good question. I like the question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be prisoner of the moment with my answer. Because my guy, Tom Brady, by his standards, stunk it up in the AFC Championship game and really let me down. They lost, as you remember, 26-16 to 16 at Denver. I'm going to go with Mr. Reliable Tim Duncan right now. Tim Duncan played. Tim Duncan played all-time great in the overtime at Oklahoma City in Game 6. Last night, very quietly, Tim Duncan made 9 out of 10 shots. What did he go? 21 and 10 rebounds? 9 out of 10 shots? My answer right now, prisoner of the moment, Tim Duncan. Well, I agree. I think it is Tim Duncan because for me, you know, even though neither of them have recent championships on their resume, no. uh, to, to Tom Brady's without one for the last nine years or so, Tim Duncan for the last six, longest drought for him. Uh, Tim Duncan, to me, last year, even in the loss, I was incredibly proud of him. He came to play, and, and he delivered the goods for the most part. And I, I felt real bad for him missing that hook in the lane and that tip back because yeah. I think that would have changed, might have changed the outcome of that series yeah. last year. But I definitely will go with Tim Duncan. All right, we got, we got Timmy in the house. At least I can agree on something. I'm sitting here right now, or standing rather, with uh, Daniel Perez, and you're from San Angelo. He's the athlete guy, so he knows what it takes to be a real good performer. Now, you said you had a very tough question for Stephen A. So, yes. Stephen A., should the Cowboys have drafted Johnny Manziel? I don't know what would make you think that's a tough question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they should have drafted Johnny Manziel. They obviously have bigger needs. Please don't get me wrong. And I, and And even though I would love it, Johnny Manziel in the Cowboys uniform for the pizzazz and all of that stuff. I know they don't need it, but I don't understand for the life of me how you pass up on a quarterback when Tony Romo has his back injury. He just had back surgery. He plays quarterback. And on top of it all, you have so many moments where he's come up small in big moments. And you've got this guy who's got the it factor that could bring something special to your squad. The combination of all of those things would have led me to grab Johnny Manziel, even though I know the Cowboys have bigger needs. Yep. The bottom line is they have so many needs. What difference does it make? You might as well go with somebody who can play at his box office because that may fuel and make your uh, franchise even more mm -hmm. attractive yep. if that's possible. Look, everybody knows how I feel about Johnny Manziel. Long run, big picture, he will prove to be the more successful NFL quarterback to Tony Romo. But I couldn't condemn Jerry Jones for not taking Johnny because I already had condemned Jerry Jones for signing Tony Romo long term. Jerry Jones committed, what was it? Uh, memory serves, 55 million guaranteed. 55 million, 108 million. 108 million. Yep. Big picture. I got to tell you, he bet the ranch on Tony Romo. And once you do that, and once I stood up the next day on this show and said, that's a big mistake then how can I say you should have drafted Johnny Manziel? Because of the back injury. Remember, okay. you said that prior, but once you have, once Tony Romo hurt his back, all bets are off. I understand the cap hit. I understand all of those things that come with it. But what I'm saying to you is that Tony Romo is one solid hit away from going down. Do you realize they had the 32nd ranked defense in the National Football League last year? Yeah. They have needs everywhere. Yeah. So I, I can't, look, as a Cowboy fan, I just have to accept the fate that Jerry handed to me and say, okay, you made your bed, well, Jerry. Bottom, bottom line is this. Bottom line. The Cowboys are going to stink. Just prepare yourself for it. They're going to stink. So why not, why not just get somebody that brings attention away from those other problems, sort of buying yourself some cachet, some time? Do you realize what a villain you're making yourself? Do you realize this is Cowboyville here in San Antonio? Yeah. Hey, Skip.
Yes, he uh, actually he could care less, as we know. He does not care at all, not one little bit, not whether or not he's a villain. Mm -hmm. Unofficial Mayor Crow, be nice to this unofficial mayor of Miami, a South Beach rather. We have a question <laughs> from Robert Merrill, San Antonio, and it's for you, unofficial mayor. Yes. Yes, Stephen A. Smith's question to you. Being as though the Spurs have a better bench and a better team this year, what made you pick the Miami Heat? <laughs> a better bench and a better team. They do have a better bench. They collectively are a better team. And all year long as I watch the San Antonio Spurs, I've been telling Skip, they don't just want a championship. They want Miami. So I understand the motivation that comes with it. But as I've watched this season unfold and the storylines associated with the Miami Heat in terms of whether or not this is it for Dwayne Wade, will Chris Bosh leave, LeBron James, you can't lose another NBA Finals, legacy issues, all of this other stuff. I started and knowing that Miami is tired of everybody treating them like the Spurs should have won the title and not themselves who actually have it. I just said under those conditions, are you going to come and take the title from LeBron? And I've just decided, I just decided that no, I don't believe that they're going to take it from him. So we'll see. I, I just, Kerry, want to thank my friend Stephen A. Smith for not jinxing my Spurs pick by picking the Spurs himself this year. Thank you very much. We can call it jinx. We can call yeah. it jinx all we want to. All I know is that all of these people out here talking, they would know I couldn't find any of y'all when the Spurs lost. Yeah. And this I picked true. them. Nobody yeah, this is true. Hey, Carrie. Yes, yes, darling. Please, we have go gone ahead. this entire show. Uh -huh. I have to make one mention here. We have gone this entire show without talking about Manu Ginobili. Manu! Manu! Wait, 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 Manu. wait, 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 is that, is that ca all caps, Manu, or is that lower caps? Where are we at? All caps? All caps, Manu. All caps, Manu. This man <laughs> was the centerpiece of my pick of Spurs and Six because he is playing about six years younger than he played a year ago. Okay. And last night, Stephen A. Smith, did you notice he had 16 with a couple of early threes, and then he had 11 assists? I think I mentioned that on Thank several you. occasions. Thank you. Thank you. You, you have mentioned. Okay, listen, listen, listen. listen. Manu, Manu Talk about how good he deserves is. a lot of credit. He but does. let's understand one of the big reasons why. It's because he stunk last year on several games in the NBA. That Finals. is true, you guys. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. That, that is true. He did, right? Casually. It's called what it is. Yes, that's very true. Okay, listen. This question is going to be for you, Skip, and I and I wanted I wanted Erica Forbes to give this question to you because I feel like you can be really objective and fair. This is your chance to endear yourself with the South Beach crowd, okay? With the South Beach crowd? Yeah, just try. Come on. I don't I don't need South Beach. I, listen. He's, he's, yeah. Will LeBron stay in Miami? That all depends on Dwayne Wade's health. And I must admit, I'm, I'm being prisoner of the moment again. We had Tim Grover on yesterday, and I think Tim, as his trainer, has worked minor miracles with Dwayne. Dwayne was explosive for about, what would you say, two and a half quarters last night? I was a little disappointed in Dwayne down the stretch, not because of my Spurs pick, but just for his sake and LeBron's sake. But my gut feeling is still that LeBron will stay in South Beach. Okay, that's fair. That's my gut as well because why would you leave? <laughs> I mean, I mean it's South Beach, you know, the palm trees, sunshine, you know, no state taxes, just like here. I, I get it, but I will say this: LeBron is going to look at the roster. That's going to be his number one issue because. He's going to ask himself, am I going to have to put in the work over the next several years that I've had to put in here? But I do believe that ultimately Pat Riley is the key because Pat Riley, this is something that's special about Pat Riley. Every promise he made to LeBron, he has delivered on. Mm -hmm. He told LeBron what he would put around him. He yep. delivered. He told LeBron what it would reap. He delivered. And so because of that, when you have an executive with such incredible cachet, who has lived up to his word and keeps his word. When you talk about the Miami Heat being a first-class organization, just like the Spurs are, by the way, mm -hmm. this is why you talk about them, because they keep their word. What they tell you they are about and what they tell you they're going to do, they do it. So if I had to bet my money, 
I would bet on LeBron James staying in Miami, but it's only a 60% possibility. It's still a 40% chance he'll and leave. By the way, Tim Grover did say sitting right here yesterday, he thinks Dwayne can play four more years wow. at a high level. Are you buying that? If he's healthy, I think LeBron Dwayne Wade is a superstar in this league. ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. Comes alive. The NBA. The Miami Heat have won the 2013 NBA title. Major League Baseball. The Boston Red Sox have won the World Series. The full championship series. The tide has risen again. The third time in four years. You're home for the best in sports play-by-play. ESPN Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the Riverwalk. Little known fact here, built in the 1930s as a federal project during the Depression era. It's lovely now. Shops, fans, places to eat. Kip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Kerry Champion, more importantly. LeBron James, ladies and gentlemen, did not address the media last night because he was hydrating on an IV. However, he did make the following statement. We'll let you take a look at it. He said, I lost all the fluids that I was putting in the last couple of days out there on the floor. It was an unusual circumstance. I never played in a building like that. It's been a while, like high school. All right. Well, that was his statement because he couldn't address the media. Hydrating, getting back in shape. Stephen A. Smith, after what you saw last night, have you lost any confidence in your pit? Zero. None whatsoever. A matter of fact, I'm more confident than I was before the, before last night. I don't believe that. <laughs> I, I, tro- I totally feel that way. And the reason why is because I saw the kind of impact and effect Miami's defense can have on the Spurs. Again, you know, it's not much room for error because I picked this series to go seven games. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's, the, that's just how I feel about it. I think it's going to be an epic matchup, an epic encounter, uh, one for the ages, and I think this is going to go the distance. Uh, but at the same time, when I watch what Miami was able to do defensively, mm-hmm. that really resonates with me because of their quickness. See, what people have to understand is that really Popovich is going to do everything that he can to maintain San Antonio going big because the combination of Duncan with Splitter really can cause Miami problems. But when Miami gets its game going, then to adjust to them, you have to go small mm-hmm. just to keep up with them. But going small won't work against Miami over the long haul in this series. There's a reason that Chris Bott, one of the things that we lament, if you're a San Antonio Spurs fan or you're somebody that thought they would win in last year's finals, you said, where was Tim Duncan when LeBron missed the three and Bosch grabbed the rebound and gave it to Ray Allen? Tim Duncan wasn't in the game. Pop does what he normally does in terms of picking his spots with Tim Duncan. But not having that big in a lot of people's mind course San Antonio. I think if you're San Antonio this year, particularly with the improved play of my friend Tiago Splitter. Good buddy. Okay. By the, the way, line. he but, made four out of four shots in the right. second half last night. That's right. Thank you, Tiago. That's right. He was set up nicely with a couple of those passes by my dude. But, but the thing is, but the thing is, again, it's really a chess match because they're relatively evenly matched. And I'm just, I'm just of the belief that when, the, when it gets tight, and when the time arrives, that I'm, I'm going to roll with the champions. All right. You know, I'm going to give you one good point you made. I do believe that my Spurs got knocked back on their heels in the first and second quarters by the speed, especially the hand speed, of the Miami defense. They were getting their hands on a lot of balls that the Thunder or the Blazers or back to the Mavericks couldn't get their hands on. But I'm here to say that after what I saw last night, I have even more confidence in this right here. Oh, boy. Spurs in six. Thank you very much. Spurs in six. And I'll tell you why. After what I saw last night, I'm going to pick the Spurs to also win game two. And I wasn't sure which way I would go. Wow. You know why? You know why? Trust me on this. I don't think... My Spurs can handle the basketball any more poorly than they handled it for long stretches last night. After three quarters, I sat back Mm -hmm. and said, I don't recognize my team tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who they are. To have 20-plus turnovers through three quarters was mind-blowing to me. For Danny Green, and I'm going to say this, to stink it up for three and a half quarters the way he stunk it up last night was mind-blowing. To have the quiet man that is Kawhi Leonard be so quiet for three and a half quarters was stunning to me. Do you think that will continue in game two? I don't. 
the Spurs cannot play worse than they did for much of the game in game two. So I think you'll see them come out with their RPM a little higher passing the basketball. They will respect the speed of the Miami defense. I think by the end of the game they were figuring out how to unlock the Miami defense, even albeit without LeBron James, just the way they started to figure out Oklahoma City and Ibaka. So I like my Spurs to win game two. I'm of the mindset... I'm of the mindset that it's either going to be Manu or Danny Green. Both of them are not going to explode at the same time. That's how I think. Not to mention the fact that when I also look at Miami, I'm very fond of this guy. I like him. He's hit some big-time shots in his career. Mario Chalmers, you got to show up. I mean, my Lord. 17 minutes, just one or three shoot from the field. I need more from Mario Chalmers. He was he, he, he was rattled early. He was yeah. turning the ball over. Well, mostly he foul had, trouble. He had five turnovers. He had three points and five turnovers, Skip. That's unacceptable. Norris Cole mm-hmm. played 29 minutes for a reason. We know he's cat quick. He can defend, but he's got to make some of his perimeter yeah. shots. But if I expect the Wayne Wade and Chris Bosh to do at least what they did. You know, in terms of the 18, and I expect Boss to average anywhere from 15 to 18. I expect Wade to average anywhere from 18 to 20. I do not expect LeBron James to cramp up again. Somebody, <laughs> Power Aid, get whoever it is, they need to figure it out. Get some Cajun get water. Get some Cajun water. Do some something. Get, uh, 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 something like that. But, 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 All I'm saying to you is that the kind of defense, the ability to adjust, the quickness that they have, I think that you're going to see them amp it up. I don't know whether they'll win game two or not, but I'm telling you this. I think the series will be tied at 2-2 after four. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. I think you're telling me the Spurs will win game two. I don't know. I don't know. i I got to do my homework on how LeBron is going to feel. Okay. But I do believe. After four games, it will be 2-2. So if the Miami Heat were to lose game two, they will win the next two in Miami. It will be 2-2 after four games. So would you send LeBron a case of Powerade today? No. Just just to make sure. I don't know. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Heat won game two. All right, so listen, Skip, you had 15 points uh, in game one. You were right on. What do we got for game two? You got a pick? You got a score? I got a close game. Okay. I got a little lower scoring. I'll go Spurs 100 to 98 in game two. 100 to 98. Wow. All right. You know what? You know what? Go for I it. Gotcha. Go I got you. I know I got you. I'm going to go with Miami okay. to win game two. Assuming LeBron James is going to be on the floor. Okay. I'm going to pick the Miami Heat to win this game 101 95. Welcome back. Kerry Champion here, Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, one of the greatest, Hall of Famers. Let's give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Isaiah Thomas, shall we not? He needs more than that. Backbone of the Bad Boy Pistons, back-to-back champions in the 80s. You need all of that love and more. Now, you and Stephen A. are good friends, are you not? Yeah, yes, some only, days. On, only when he's slapping me around, giving me <laughs> advice. <laughs> you guys both are picking the heat, obviously. Right. And I don't know, you weren't too happy about that. No, because they're taking some heat here, right? And they're about to take yeah. some heat in a yeah. minute. All right, so do us a favor. You watched the game last night, and you were on the record. You told Yahoo Sports there no player in the world could have played through cramps like that, including yourself. Tell us yeah. your reaction. Elaborate. I, I would say no no athlete. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you hit with leg cramps um, and – your muscles, you know, start to contract like that. I mean, it, it's dip, it's almost impossible to run, to jump, to move. I mean, you can limp through an ankle, you can limp through a knee, you can limp through pain, you can play with, you know, viruses and everything else. But when you get hit with cramps, I mean, it, it just shuts you down, whether you play football, baseball, basketball, whether you run marathons. I mean, you, you know, I've I've seen people on the 18 mile, they get hit with them cramps, and they, you just have to shut it down, you know. You know, you know but Zeke, i got to ask you this question. What are we to make of it when we see an elite professional athlete like a Shannon Sharp, for example? We know what a great tight end he was, how he could play the game of football, and he's tweeting like, come on, LeBron, this is a big game, you know, basically like knocking him for not – playing. What are we to say or what are we to think when a professional athlete who's endured exactly what you just explained has an entirely different opinion than what you just explained? Well, two things. So, um, 
I was on Mike and Mike this morning, so I, I heard Shannon call in to defend himself. Okay, mm-hmm. I did not. I did not hear that. Okay. And, and and what he said was the first time LeBron went out asking out with cramps, you know, he was saying, okay, that was the tweet. Right. And then the second time when he came back in to try it again, and then he went out, Shannon had a different response. Okay, mm-hmm. good. So Glad. I didn't know that. So the second part is. When when you're muscular like a guy like LeBron or a guy like Shannon Sharp, right? I mean, there there's no body fat on those guys. I mean, Skip don't have any body no, fat. No, he doesn't. I mean, me and you we're sitting shape. here with That's a little. That's right. We get a little, <laughs> little, 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 So you know, <laughs> those guys that they, there's no room. So when they muscles tighten up, yeah. I mean, they whole body go yeah. down. So LeBron, it appeared to me that. It not only was his left leg, it was almost like the left side of his body. And Shannon Sharp talked about how he was laying in bed totally debilitated where his whole body cramped up. And, you know, we've seen it with high school kids, college uh, football players, you know, when they compete out in the sun. You know, there's some period of time where the temperature gets too hot where they just shut it down and they say, we can't, we can't play anymore. Now. Was that an excuse? No. Did that actually happen to LeBron? Yes. Here's my issue, and none of us are going to be able to know the truth of this. With 7.30 left in the game, LeBron waved to Spolstra, take me out of the game. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he was just overheated at that point, just flat out gassed where he just couldn't breathe, or if he was starting to cramp. He wasn't limping at that point. He just missed a three on the wing, right. and he immediately turned to Spo and did what I thought was a little bit of a melodramatic, Coach, take me. I can't go anymore. Okay? I don't know. You see what I mean? I don't know what to read into that because I've told you on this show, it's hard for us to know how hurt somebody is. What are they feeling? Nobody knows except LeBron James at that point. Yeah. I don't know exactly what you played through on your ankle because I can't feel how bad it was. If I could hook up to a machine where I could say for 30 seconds, oh, God, that's what it felt like? How did that, that was the all-time heroic effort by Isaiah Thomas. I don't know for sure, but it looked to me like the first time he asked out because he was just overheated. Is that fair? I don't, I don't know if he was overheated, but you and I both have experienced cramps. And you know when it starts, you like... Okay, it, it's coming. So but, you, but when you, it starts, it just clamps. It's yeah, just an yeah. immediate and clamp. Like yeah. You're done. Yeah. You are, you're shut down. So maybe maybe he felt, I, I don't know. Okay. So I don't even want to speculate okay. what he may okay. or, or may not have been thinking. All right, now let's, let's get to what Stephen A. and I have gone back and forth on. 17 other players were on the floor last night, and nobody else cramped to my knowledge. I didn't see anybody cramp. Why is it that the world's greatest athlete, in a lot of people's eyes, maybe one of the fittest athletes in the world, LeBron James, has had some history of cramping? Who, who's to blame for that? Um, I, I would say it, it, um, it, it's dual. So you, the, the athlete has to take some blame uh, for not understanding his body yep. as well as he should. And then the medical staff you know, has to take some blame also. But no one in that arena expected when we came to the arena last night no. that we were going to face those conditions. Sure. You know, so when you prepare for a marathon, like you say, the you, day before. Yeah, you pumping, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. so you, when we used to go and play at the Boston Garden when there was no heat, I mean, no air conditioning, yeah. but it was only heat, yep. you know, you knew the type of environment and the conditions that you were getting ready to play in. So you prepared for that, you prepared for the heat. You did hydrate a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Last night, I don't think anybody did. But I think the stat sheet really points to an interesting point. The only person who played more than 35 minutes last night in a championship game was Tony Parker. Everybody else, when you look at their minutes, everybody played 32, 30, 22. No one, ever, no one other than Parker played over 35 sure. minutes, yeah. which I don't know if I've ever seen a championship game where you've only had one player play 35 minutes. Normally your best players are sure. playing 35, 40, 45 minutes. Here's, um, you know. here's my thing. Despite all of that, and despite what we saw transpire, you still walked over to that board and you picked the Miami Heat. Yeah. Yes, I did. Why? Even after what you saw last night. Well, I'm old school. And, and the champ is the champ until somebody beats him. Okay. And 
I look at the Miami Heat, and they are champions. The San Antonio Spurs are trying to dethrone the champions. And I also look at the Heat, and I say, if Dwayne Wade is healthy, which he wasn't last year, I don't see the Spurs really having an answer for Dwayne Wade. I think they got answers for everything else. But if Wade and LeBron are on top of their game, I don't think they have answers for both of them. Ladies and gentlemen, San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the U.S. 1.3 million people live here. And I think half of them are here rooting on first take and the unofficial mayor or official, whatever. I don't know what the title is anymore. Uh, we got Isaiah Thomas in here. Before we went to break, we were talking about Dwayne Wade and what you saw from him once LeBron left the game. Or, or both, both early and late. Well, tell us your point. take. Yeah. I, I think Wade is the, the shark that's kind of swimming in the murky waters yeah. in this series mm -hmm. because he appears to be healthy. And I thought at the start of the game, he was in such a groove. I mean, everything was just easy. It was just like catch, pump, boom, shot. Right, you know, right. it, just, it was just rhythm. It was, it was flow. It wasn't anything hard. It wasn't anything difficult. And I thought he was poised to just have one of those breakout games last night. Right. And when I look at the Spurs right now, they again, they have an answer in terms of guarding LeBron, how to defend Bosch. But Wade is the one where they really have no matchup for him. They can't put Park on him. They can't put Ginobili on him. They can't put Diaw on him. When he's right and he's healthy. Or Danny Green. He can't, can't he, he's the guy right. that can play inside. He can play on the box. He can get to the foul line. He can take you off the dribble. So, so he's he really has the complete package when he's healthy. So right. And I don't think they have an answer for So for what that. are we to make of the fact that that wasn't the Dwayne way we saw once LeBron went out the game? Well, you have to give San Antonio credit. Yeah! You know, when, when, when the opponent is down, when the opponent is weak, and they're a little off balance, it only takes a minute for the game to to get blown out, especially yeah. with the Spurs. And in that 30, 45-second period of time, Danny Green got loose, you know, Parker made a shot, and everything started working. And in these type of games, you only need, you know, 30 to 45 seconds to really take a lead from 2 to 10, as we saw last night. And you got to give the Spurs credit yep. for making sure that when they saw their opponent was weak, they attacked at the right moment. Okay. As an all-time great guard, I want your insight into a Manu Ginobili who, as he approaches old age in this game, if, if I will, what, what do you see in his game now? Because to me, he's playing five or six years younger than he did last year at this time when he had a hard time finishing game six and seven. What do you see in his game at his advanced age? Uh, I see um, a rejuvenated intensity and a more cerebral, intelligent player who doesn't necessarily use athleticism but uses his smarts. He came out to start the game and he knocked down two, two or three three-point shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to, to really give them confidence, to really get the team going. And, you know, his, his international play, uh, his World Cup play combined with his championship play, his understanding, we, we always point to Duncan, we always point to Parker, but I think how you gauge the San Antonio Spurs and how they gauge themselves is through Ginobili. I agree. And I thought Ginobili came out and said, I'm ready, I'm ready to go, you don't have to worry about me, and they needed him in that, at the start of that game last mm -hmm. night because Miami was trying to knock him out at right. the start. Early. And I thought Ginobili came out and he kept everybody at bay. Well, I agree with both you and Skip is on this level. Regardless of me thinking Miami can win this series because of LeBron and D-Wade, when I look at the, Miami, the San Antonio Spurs, Manu Ginobili struggled miserably in the finals last year. It wasn't game six. It was the only time he suffered. First three or four games he wasn't around. He definitely has been on a mission this year, and you can see it. And to me, that elevates the importance of Dwayne Wade even more it because does. Dwayne Wade is the one guy on the Miami Heat that can match that. LeBron's got his own challenges. You know, he's the best in the world, the legacy, the rings, you know, not four, not five, not six, all this other stuff. At some point in time, no matter how much you try to tune that out, that creeps in. It contributes to his greatness, but it also contributes to the load. 
whereas Dwayne Wade doesn't have that. So as a result of it, and you've had the, the excuse of injuries to lean on in terms of the dissipated skill level, not skill level, but in terms of what you can give because of your health, mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade has the excuse. But he's not going to use it. He's going to bring it. But the problem is normally he would just bring it, and that would normally be good enough. Now you got to equal or eclipse what Ginobili is bringing. Mm -hmm. And that's where this becomes very, very interesting to me because, to me, I'm assuming that whatever Ginobili gives you, Dwayne Wade can match that. He can, give for my, he can do for Miami what Ginobili can do for the Spurs. If he doesn't do it, if he doesn't do it, Miami loses the series. You know, I, I I agree with you in terms of Ginobili and Wade. I, I look at I look at Wade last night, and if you notice, every time Ginobili was guarding him or wherever they switched Ginobili off, exactly. they was attacking Ginobili. Mm -hmm. So the Miami Heat, just like you and Skip understand how important Ginobili is. The Miami Heat understands how important he is. Right. And they are seriously trying to wear him down offensively and defensively. And to Ginobili's credit, he was smart enough to maneuver himself around in the game, you know, where he would be on Wade, would be on LeBron, mm -hmm. you would find him on Chalmers. So he kind of figured out the game plan early and then said, okay, defensively I can work around it, but offensively now who's guarding me? Mm. You know, so it's, it's, it's a two-way street with him. But I thought the, one of the key things that Pop and San Antonio did last night is in the screen and roll. Miami's defense, they trap screen and roll. So they put the bigs in the screen and roll, and they went to a smaller lineup. So now when they trap screen and roll, you got Duncan rolling to the basket. And the help man was always a smaller player. Mm. You always saw the, you always saw Duncan in the middle, with you know Mario Chalmers behind him or Cole behind him. So they took LeBron, the bigger player, out of the rotation and made the point guard have to rotate to pick up the big. And consequently, when Duncan and those guys got it in the middle, they were shooting over someone who was six three, six four. And by the way, if they helped off the corner, it was the kick out to Parker, right? for the three-point shot. So I thought that was a, a key point in terms of strategy that, that Pop and, and San Antonio Spurs they made the out. adjustments. They made the adjustment okay, in terms of that rotation. A number of times, the first three quarters, two Heat defenders would go with the man with the basketball, yes. and that man, be it Ginobili, whoever it was, would try to force a pass inside, and a smaller man would intercept the pass which is why they had 20-odd turnovers through three quarters, which was very un-San Antonio-like. Yeah. Right? Poor, poor guard play in terms of passing mm -hmm. angles. So, as you notice, at the, at the end of the game, instead of those passes being low, where little guys like me, the yeah. scavengers, you know, we can get out there <laughs> and get right. it, you know, those passes started coming hot. Duncan started catching the basketball up high. They wasn't throwing it down here. They wasn't throwing it chest level. They wasn't throwing bounce passes down low where LeBron and those guys could tap it out. When they changed the rotation mm -hmm. and they forced a smaller man to rotate, right. yep. that ball came into the air, and consequently they like were I able said, to catch, score, and pass You sound like you picked you pick San Antonio instead of Miami. I'm, no, just, I'm, just, I'm just talking about the Just giving them credit. You know? Just giving them credit. Okay, look, game two, game two. Yeah. Stephen A. says Miami. He says, uh, he says Spurs. Who do you have? I'm going to pick San Antonio to win game two. Yeah. However, now that the format is 2-2-1-1-1, two, two, one, 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 I'm picking Miami to win both games back in Miami. Okay. And I think I think both these teams are good enough to win one game on each other's floor. Okay. Right. I don't think either one of them is good enough to win two games. Mm -hmm. So I don't see Miami, I don't see San Antonio winning back in Miami. But I do see Miami winning a game five here and a game six back in Miami. Well, we have it. I see. I, I, I get where you're coming from because my, I was tempted to just say both teams are going to hold home court until game seven. You know? If but it's I, a game seven, San Antonio wins. I think, San, I think yeah. Miami can win a game seven here. No way. I think so. My two cents. No way. <laughs> you know what I, I thought we could beat the Lakers in the game seven? Yeah. yeah. Can't do it. Can't <laughs> if you had been healthy, you might have. In their building? If you had been healthy, you might have. I, I don't. If you hadn't twisted that ankle in game six when you dropped 25 in the third one. Game, game, game six was all moment. Game seven, 
it's a different kind of guy that shows up. But Isaiah, you know what I love what about the team. San Antonio team? Yeah. I love them away from home more than I do at home. Yeah. They were 30 and 11 on the road this year. The Heat were 22 and 19. I, there's something about the unity of this team. They really enjoy turning down the sound in a rival arena, which is why they played so well in Game Six and Seven last year yeah. until the bitter end. Yeah, All right. they, they do it. I mean, yeah. you you're talking about two champions. I mean, like yeah. real champions, yeah. like the Spurs are champions. You know, the Heat are champions. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like it's a newcomer that's coming to the party. Both these teams have experience. They have know-how, and they make, they make very few mistakes. And when it's time to kill, they know how to kill. We've got a Texas native here. You guys may know him from that 2003 championship team here with the Spurs. We know him. It's Steven Jackson. He's our guy. It's the second time back here. Thank you so much for joining us. Man, we appreciate it. Give it up for Steven Jackson. We, by, by you want to get say, at him? Get at him! I just want to say, say Steven what? Jackson looks like he's in good enough shape to still play. <laughs> and they, they could have used you on LeBron a couple times last night. You know, I love the game, Skip. Uh, I'm always going to be ready to play. Good thing about it, I never had no surgeries my whole career. So if, if the right opportunity comes, I'll be back in the game. So he's available. Executive, he's available if you're paying attention. All right, so let's get right to it. Uh, you picked the Spurs. No surprise for many mm -hmm. folks out here. But um, how impressed were you with the Spurs after you saw game one? Uh, I think it was more than game one. I was impressed the whole the whole season, playoffs. I've been impressed the whole year. Um, it, everybody knew who I was going to pick. I got a lot of you know a lot of love for those guys, but they playing well. I mean, it's, it's plain and simple. Uh, you can tell by every series they had in the playoffs, the games haven't really been close. So I mean, it, it showed last night. You went by ten in the finals. You you you're showing that you're pretty good. You better you better than that next team. Well, you're no you're, you're no scrub. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting next to me because I'm allergic to scrubs, as uh -huh. you well know. Uh, but 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 the thing about it is is that. You have helped this team to championship in the past. You've had your big moments where you showed up and produced. And there was a time in the recent past mm -hmm. where you felt like you should have still been a part of this team. Looking at what these guys are doing and the way Manu Ginobili is playing right now, mm -hmm. what kind of thoughts into your mind? Well, I, you know, I always say everything happens for a reason. But uh, to see him playing well now and to, and to see him healthy, uh, that's my brother. I'm happy for him. I wish him all the success. I think... It will be great for him to get MVP of the series. Tony has one. Tim has one. I think it would be great for Manu to get MVP of the series. If they win. If they win. Oh, God. So, Mr. Smith and I have gone back and forth for almost two hours now about this. i got to ask you the same question. Uh -huh. If LeBron James had stayed on the floor, managed to stay on the floor the rest of that game, the last four minutes, would the Heat have won that basketball game? You have to say yes because he's the best player on the planet. So you, really? have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have to give him the benefit of the doubt. This is the same guy that everybody was praying, praising for being in the finals four years in a row. It's the same guy. So you you, you, you got to give him that. you got to give him that. you got to give him that credit. I mean, did, did you did you put him up to this? No, no. <laughs> Steven Jackson is a realist. By the way, he has a beautiful first name. And you, know, and you got to take you, you, the man is honest, and he's just giving you facts. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I love the Spurs. That's my guys. But LeBron is the best player on the planet, and... With him on the game, you have to give the Heat a chance. In I mean, that situation, right. in right. that situation, that's all. Just talk about one game. Last night, the way that game was going, there is no way Miami would have lost that game if LeBron was healthy enough to be So, as, as a primary LeBron defender in your time with mm -hmm. the Spurs, how did you think they were able to defend him before he left with Gramps? Nobody guards LeBron better than the Spurs because you have multiple guys, but they're the best team defensive team in the league for the last what, five, six years. So they play great team defense, and they know how to guard him just as well as anybody else. How about the way the Heat were able to disrupt the Spurs for about three and a half quarters because it was on pace for, it ended up, 23 turnovers. Well, that was the surprise, the yeah. turnovers and how, how easy Dwayne Wade was scoring. That, that was a surprise to me. And, but it, I, I feel if they continue to score like that, the Spurs going to have problems. When you look at this team right now, the team that you picked to win these NBA Finals, is it a product simply of what you're seeing and what you've seen throughout the season on the court? Or does it have more to do with the fact that they lost last year, they came so close, and you can't imagine them losing two years in a row to the same team? You know, I'm the realist. It's both. It's really both. You know, it's, it's hard to see the Spurs get back to the situation and lose. Uh, they have a great, had a great season. Uh, best record in the league. So you you, 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 you got to give them that. I mean, I think there's no way they can come back. You know, they've been dying for this moment. They're going to win. I, I, just, I just don't see them losing.
I ain't going to say six or seven, but the Spurs will be raising the trophy at the end of the series. How great a job has Coach Popovich done this year in your view? You shouldn't be surprised. I mean, how long has he been doing it? He's been doing it for so long. I mean, like with the core guys he has with Tim Ginobili and Tony, and uh, the, the way he's built this team since he's been here, it's, it's not a surprise. You expect that from him. You expect him to be one of the best teams. You expect him to have Class A guys. And you expect the uh, Coach Popovich to be one of the best coaches. That's just what you expect these days from him. What's so special about him compared to some of the other great coaches in the game you've seen? Um, I think his communication and and his respect for a player's opinions. You know, um, he, he's definitely the coach. He coaches the team, but at the same time, you know, he gives guys the proper rest. Uh, he, he's just a, a player's coach, and I think it shows, you know, why those guys give so much for him. You spend a lot of time around Tim Duncan. If your pick is correct and they do win this championship, what advice would you give Tim about stopping now, retiring now? I wouldn't give him none because... You know, Tim loves basketball. He eats, sleeps, dreams basketball. That's all. The season's over. He's one of the best players to ever play. And two weeks after the season's over, he's working on his game. So you, you can't really. He's going to play. I think Tim's going to play till, you know, till his heart just not in the game, and that's hard to see. Two, if, three more years, at least. At least. At least. If good news for you. Yeah. If there is a chance mm -hmm. for Miami to win this series, how do they have to pull it off? Stop the open shots. You can't let Danny Green get hot. You can't let Marco Bellinelli come down and run off three or four. You got to stop the threes. Make them score over you. Make Tim score over you. And, and just play solid defense. No wide open shots. That's the only way to beat the Spurs. So where does the series go from here? You're not sure how it's going to play out, but mm -hmm. what do you think about game two? I think game two, LeBron's going to be the player he's been his whole career. You know, um, I think he does good when people talk about him and try to bash him, you know. Like yeah. I said, it's amazing. People was just praising him a couple weeks ago, four times, four times yeah. in the finals. So, but I think he's gonna come out and have a great game, just like he did the, the deciding game against Indiana. Although I'm looking at it upside down because it seems like the Spurs today are getting a little slighted because everybody's saying, including you, mm -hmm. well, if LeBron had played, he would have won. He would have so won. Yeah. Th that's a little disrespectful right. to the the effort that it took for the Spurs to snap out of their funk late in that game. I, I agree with you. Okay. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to say they would have won, but having LeBron in the game, it gives them a legitimate chance to win the game. I wouldn't okay. say you wouldn't have won because LeBron has lost to the Spurs before. So, but uh, in it, with him in the game, you have a great chance, and everybody has to agree with that. I think Chris Bosh is a big X factor in this series simply because of his ability to hit perimeter shots. He's got to do that in order for Miami to have a chance. Of course, Dwayne Wade needs to do what he's capable of doing as well to match whatever Mono's going to give San Antonio. Mm -hmm. But I think Chris Bosh is going to be a key. Your assessment of that? Feed him a little gunpowder. You need to come out with a little attitude, a little fire, a little emotion. This is the finals. You shouldn't be too laid back. This is the finals. This is what, it, what you play for all year. Show a little emotion. Eat some gunpowder. Be ready to play. Go to war. So sum this up for us because we, we see this Spurs team, low ego, mm -hmm. share the ball, all for one. You fit in that scheme, but sometimes you didn't fit mm -hmm. because you are very much, as we're seeing right now, your own man. Mm -hmm. You are much more outspoken than any of your Spurs teammates were. How did you fit into that scheme for as long as you did? Pop let me be me somewhat. He uh, did. He had Tim. Yeah. He had Mike Brown. He had guys to, to pull me back in, uh, Dave, Kevin Willis, and those guys. But I think for the most part, I wanted to be a part. I wanted to be a right. part of a great organization. You know, when, 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 just like when you answer your phone, you don't answer your phone because you, you don't want to. <laughs> I wanted to be a part of the Spurs. <laughs> I wanted to be a part of a great organization. I yeah. wanted to be a champion. So yeah. it, 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 it was more of a uh, of appreciation for me. You know, I, I just, I'm, I'm always thankful for them for, for letting me be a part of the organization. You miss it? Definitely miss it. Definitely miss, miss the game. Wow. I miss the game, the Spurs, everything. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so we, so you still willing to play? Oh yeah, I'm definitely willing to play. I mean, I have a lot of things going on. God has been good, but if the game brings me back, I'm definitely willing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you got one more question no, before we get I, out of I, here. I got a feeling he's going to play for somebody <laughs> again. Uh, you, I wouldn't mind him on the Knicks or the Lakers. <laughs> they can use us out. We can use you too. Don't move the Lakers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Give it up for Stephen Jackson, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>